Hi there. In this series of videos, I want to create a PHP connection to a MySQL database and then see how we can update or pen new data to that database uh, via web form. So to start off, I've actually already got a database created. I use uh, DreamHost. DreamHost.com is my web host and one of their services included is the ability to create an uh, unlimited number of MySQL databases. So I happen to have a database right here called uh, WebDev89DB1. That's my generic database. And I've created two users. You can have multiple users for a database and then you can even limit what a particular user can do on a database. So in the DreamHost settings, I've just created this new user, 89db user one which is what I'll be using in this video. And you can click on that in the, in the DreamHost uh, web panel, and you can decide which capabilities that particular user will have on the database. For instance, you could uncheck this, and that would prevent a user from being able to delete a table of data. Perhaps you only want the, the user to be able to select existing data. That might be a good one to use a lot without the ability to delete data or update data or insert data. So there's a bunch of different options here. Um, I'll just go ahead and leave them all checked and uh, the database user that I'm going to use for these uh, for this video I'll end up getting rid of later on. Okay so basically that's all in my DreamHost web panel. Now I've logged in to my to my database. Basically I went to my host address and I logged in with my username and password and I now have access to this particular database. Currently my database webdev89db1 has zero tables in it. So in order to really get some work going I think I would like to be able to create a database. So I'm going to head over to structure and I'm going to go ahead and create a new table. Let's see for this one I think I'll just I'll try to keep it very generic here. Uh, I'll call this one people, my people uh, table within my database. Number of fields, I'll just go ahead and put in a few fields. Click go and I'm just going to put in some mock data real quick here. So field, I'll put in uh, people ID, um, first name, last name, I'll keep them all vari variable character data types and for ID I'll go ahead and put in uh, uh, length, I'm sorry for length I'll put in three 15 and 15. Okay, I think we're good, and I'll make this one the primary key. Actually, I think I'll change this here at the last minute. I think for my people ID, I will make this a, uh, a medium integer, and I'll just change that to 4, and I'm going to do an auto increment, not null so that way it'll kind of generate user IDs for me automatically just numbers. So I think I'll go that route, go ahead and click Save, and the table has been created. I can see it over here in my list, so I now happen to have a table. Um, now I would like to go ahead and be able to put in some data. Uh, there's a couple ways obviously we can do this from a web form. That would be kind of the most fun way to go. So uh, if you already had some existing data, you could import that from a comma delimited file, something of that nature. Uh, I'm going to jump over to my editor notepad plus plus and create a web form so I can insert data that way. Okay I've got a blank PHP file here I've just called it connect mysql.php and I'll probably use this multiple times in different uh, different files and plus this will make it easier for me specifically so when I do change usernames and passwords for the database I can just change this one file and any scripts or any other scripts that refer to this file, those will of course get the updated information. So I'm going to start off here in my editor of choice, Notepad++, and um, put in an open, opening PHP, and I'll just press my enter a couple times uh, down, and go ahead and close it off. And I'm going to be working right in here. So one of the first things I'm going to do is going to set some uh, constant variables. Basically, I want to have some very simple keywords that represent information about my database, such as the host name, username, and password. So I'm going to go ahead and type those up here. Um, define. The database user. And then for the username, I just have to put in the username that I've created. And my username is going to be 89db user1. Okay. And I'm going to repeat this a number of times. So I'm going to go ahead and have a constant for my db password. 
and the password that I'm using is db pass one. Oops, that's lowercase though. My database host. For a lot of them, you might put in localhost. Uh, my database actually does have a separate hosting address though, and I'm storing it in a different location, so I'll go ahead and put in my host. There we go. And I'm going to also put in my database name. My database happens to be called webdev89db1, lowercase though. Okay, so these variables are going to be representations of the data here. So later on when I want to be able to connect to my database, I can put in a connect function and I can use the db user and db password and database name instead of having to type this information out. This is especially useful if you know you're going to have several points of connection. And in a way, this PHP file is kind of like a variable in that I'm going to be able to use this PHP file multiple times because I'll have multiple scripts referring to the exact same database so that they can all connect in there. Now that I have my constants defined, I'm going to go ahead and create the actual connection to the database. So I'm going to create a variable here called dbConnect. So I've got some constants, which are kind of like variables, but they don't change, they can't change their value over time. And this is a more traditional variable. I'm going to call mine dbcon. And I'm going to use a mysqli connect function. Now within this function, I'm going to give it some parameters, and the parameters are going to be the parts of my, actually my constants, how I'm going to connect to this database. First I need to provide the database host, then the user, then the password, and then the database name. And since I have variables for all of those constants, I can simply type those in. So I can put in dbhost, dbuser, dbpassword, and DB name. So this is how I'm going to connect to my database. I'm providing the host, the username, the password, and the name of the database. Okay, so I'm just going to create a little uh, if statement now to check for successful connection. So I'll go ahead and type in uh, if what I'm going to test for, and then in curly braces, um, what's going to happen if my test is true. Okay, so what I'm going to test for is no connection to the database, so the uh, exclamation mark is not. And if I do not connect to the database, I'm going to use a die function. And a die function will display a message and stop the, uh, stop the script from functioning. So I'll just put in a little message here. Error connecting to database. Okay, close it off. And if I can connect, then that die function will be ignored, and I'll just simply display a message. You have connected successfully. Fantastic. Okay, and then uh, that's it for that part. So I'm going to go ahead and test it. I'm going to go ahead and save this and test it out. Okay, let's go to my browser here. Alright, went to my folder where I've stored this script. There's my connect to MySQL script, and let me click it. Yay, I've connected successfully. Okay, so now that I've been able to connect to this particular database, I want to be able to open up tables, one to the table that I've already got, and I want to be able to add some information to it. So that's going to be coming up next.